I will talk a bit about disrupted temporalities of digital archaeological artifacts. So I will explore rather the metaphorical uh, dimension of, of, uh, of that term, um, starting with, with a notion. In a recent talk given at the Goethe Institute in Warsaw, the director of the Museum of the Future in Nuremberg said that the current accelerated technological development forces museums to upgrade their permanent exhibitions each two years. Indeed, technologies change so rapidly that uh, public institutions cannot afford to lose their visitors because their displays are, uh, uh, are outdated. This notion encouraged me to think about one particular ontological feature of digital objects that are currently dominating archaeological museums. Time. In a sense, there is disturbing contradiction within digital archaeological artifacts. Their real time, their archaeological time, their digital time, and thus their exit place on the time axis. Uh, in my presentation, I'm going to investigate the temporal character of past objects framed by present media. I argue that if we do not focus on the past of objects and the present of technologies and try to understand their disruptive relation, we may easily end up in the museums of nowness, centered merely on exhibiting the, trans uh, the uh, technological transformations. Trying to figure out one of the essential features of digital archaeological objects, their temporal character, I would like to start with proposing a working definition of a digital archaeological artifact. The UNESCO Charter on the Preservation of Digital Heritage that uses the notion of digital materials states that the digital heritage consists of unique resources of human knowledge and expression. It embraces information created digitally or converted into digital form from existing uh, analog resources. Digital materials include text, databases, still and moving images, audiographic software, and web pages among a wide and growing range of formats. They are frequently ephemeral and require purposeful production, maintenance, and management to be retained. Many of those resources have lasting value and significance and therefore constitute a heritage that should be protected and preserved for current and future generations. In the language of informatics, inter interestingly, a digital artifact may denote undesirable changes to an original digital image. Yu Hui defines it as an object that takes shapes on a screen and hides in the back end of a computer program, composed of data and metadata regulated by structures or schemas. In relation to archaeology, one may grasp a digital archaeological artifact um, as multi-faced and multi-layered, where faces and layers depend on the character and range of data used to create it. A digital archaeological artifact covers all the objects, as listed by UNESCO, that exist in the digital environment and are of digital nature or creation. However, what I see as a constitutive feature of a digital archaeological artifact is its constant and multidimensional reference to a material, original and authentic object or site. This notion has a subversive, this relation has a subversive character that, ca uh, that could be summed up by referring to Victor Buckley's The Archaeology of the Immaterial. While tackling the contemporary gravitation towards technologies, virtual realities, and digitization, Buckley states that the immaterial is produced with novel consequences for understanding of self and materiality. The category of the artifact takes on a new uh, unexpected dimension when the material itself is the element that is the most unstable and in fact paradoxically the most stable entity is the digital, its immaterial digital code itself. Materiality, as you can see here on the maybe not here, but here for sure, on this, on this graph. Uh, materiality is unstable mostly because of its ability to change and transform. While at the same time a code uh, used to document or animate, it may be understood as a way of petrifying its existing state. In this way, the, archaeolo the digital archaeological record is of disrupted temporality. 
the moment of registration, transformation or uh, data processing leads to creation of a new time register where we observe the aging of the data, not the data source. As the group of digital archaeological artifacts vary in form, shape, technology or material references, I propose to distinguish three main categories of digital archaeological artifacts to observe their temporal character. So the first type of digital archaeological artifacts would be raw documents like digital maps, plans, photographs, 3D models, photograms, 3D scans. They replace the old-fashioned materials like drawn plans and maps or photographs. Those representations are merely a new way of visualizing the material and show us the changing realm of know-how. As such, they are detached from erratic properties of original sites and objects. They lack actual dimension, volume, weight, and a contextual relation to the reality of the past, so to say, a material locatedness. This type of digital artifacts, movable digital models of objects created from photographs of, or 3D scans, always represent their object as it was once registered in a particular atmosphere under specific weather conditions and in a state of conservation by a single person or a group of researchers. In this sense, those digital resources in the group of, a, of the digital artifacts of here and now, petrifying past in the exact moment, moment of the real-time performance. Real-time, in this way, is the only time the time axis is disrupted and somehow cut in the very same moment of documentation. This kind of timeless petrification poses a challenge to perceiving real sites and real artifacts. Regardless of form, function and provenance, all, all archaeological objects have in common the fact that they do change. Uh, these changes are visible in the form of vibrant matter, to use the expression coined by Jane Bennett. We see more if we look at the artifact at the real time, in the real time, observe its aging process, reconstruction and decay. Method is, as we all see, a tool for stopping time even if we update our digital representations. I propose to understand this type of digital archaeological artifacts as technological reflections on media used previously to achieve the same goals. In fact, while attacking their temporal character, those digital archaeological artifacts tell us rather about the time located on the axis of media and technology history in archaeology than about real objects themselves. The second type of digital archaeological artifact that I distinguish is an, in a, an immersive environment that refers to digital and virtual assemblages, full-scale non-material reconstructions that allow us to experience the past reality. Its rhizomatic structure based on autopoietic processes allows it to constantly transform. Maurizio Forte links virtual reality with the notion of an ecosystem. It has systemic structure, sets relations, and allows for interconnections. Drawing on this parallel, he proposes that the virtual is the ontology not opposed to the real, but rather analogous one. In this sense, the virtual and the real create not a universe, but a multiverse. Of course, we may agree that virtual is a parallel, disembodied ontology where information flows and interconnects. However, then it is essential to ask the question, what do we actually approach while engaging with this kind of digital archaeological object? Past, present, or maybe future? To answer this question, I would rather suggest to treat immersive environments based on virtual reality not as ecosystems, but rather as hyper-objects. Uh, hyper-objects that are rooted in the philosophy of new materialism are vicious and can be temporarily undulated, non-local, interobjective, and phasic. Timothy Morton explicitly writes that we can see them, we can experience their agentic behavior, but we cannot approach them. Hyper-objects are distanced, unreachable, but the idea of them protects us from the nearness of things. Virtual paths are indeed vicious. Their structure and aesthetic appeal allow us to immerse in a perfectly created vision. They should be seen as uncanny because they leave us with a feeling of unreal reality. 
On the one hand, we can believe in a projected vision because it seems to be realistic. On the other, we know that the projected reality is immaterial and untouchable. As it comes to their temporal undulation, they push us to think about time. Time is disrupted when we immerse in a past reality of digital archaeological assemblages. The story and the parents send us back to the past, but the form and our apprehension place us in the realm of here and now. The third type of digital archaeological artifact would be a material digital assemblage that they name an archaeological prosthesis. The concept of an archaeological prosthesis directs our attention to the entanglement of digital and material existing in parallel. A boundary condition for an archaeological prosthesis is a destructed archaeological matter marked by the passage of time. Cornelius Koltorf names this specific feature pastness. It is expressed materially through visible traces like destruction, fragmentation, or patina. The feature of pastness may be revealed and emphasized thanks to the digital support. If the, digital, if the original object is presented as a fragmentary and a digital ad is actually designed to be a support, a tool that allows us to see what is missing, then both actors are engaged in creating a sense of past and past things in the present. Archaeological prosthesis as immersive environment is temporarily unrelated. However, in the case of this particular digital archaeological artifact, the temporal character is of different nature. Authentic, grayish, fragmented matter and its supplement that represents the original form, sometimes colorful or of different dimensions, sounds or scents, certainly refer to different temporalities, a past one and a contemporary one. However, the difference lays in the constant reference to an actual material object. In this sense, digital support, digital supplement, is an extension of the object. As a prosthesis, it gives the object the original appearance that could not be restored without a violent material intervention on the fragile body of, the of an artifact. In other words, it provides a contemporary and situated access to the past of the past thing where entangling material and digital archaeological processes are reconnecting past with present. Digital tools immensely, but somehow subconsciously, affect the way, affect the way we think about temporality of artifacts. Whereas in the case of traditional archaeology, the discipline focused on chronology, periodization, and thus concentrated on establishing the sequence of artifacts and sites, making past even more distance with its mute objects, digital approach brought a radical shift in experiencing time and temporality. Past is definitely brought closer, but the question is, is, not, is it not too close to feel it as present? Digital archaeological artifacts are mirrors reflecting technological acceleration in archaeology. Popularized through web and museums, they responded to the technological gravitation visible in the contemporary world. Nevertheless, with disrupted temporalities constantly updated and more and more alienated from original sites and artifacts, they are, so to say, instant objects. A digital archaeological artifact, in this sense, is getting closer to the notion of a digital artifact as the one that denotes unwanted changes to an original. Here, the unwanted is the loss of link between original and its temporality. Presented to the wide public, they establish collections of here and now and the museums of nowness, centered on keeping pace with technology. Museums of nowness are not future-oriented. All that they care is to use the latest media that in two or three years will be outdated. In this sense, the lack of understanding and reflection on technological determinism, the temporal relation between archaeological objects, per se, past objects, and accelerated development of new technologies applied for heritage may cause even deeper technophilia, such a state when archaeology won't be anymore about past objects but present technologies. This is obviously encouraged by different agendas, to mention the most powerful one, digital industry. 
With this accelerated technological framework and constantly upgraded digital and virtual toolbox, I suggest a turn to slow archaeology that would encourage researchers to stop and think. Not for the sake of the state of art, but rather for the sake of heritage politics and museums. Thank you very much.